Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today's video is another deep dive into our bimanual exam with a focus on pelvic floor assessment. So let's review. Think of the introitus like a clock. The bladder is up at 12 o'clock behind the pubic bone and the coccyx is down at six o'clock. So here's your pelvis, 12 o'clock, right up behind the pubic bone. And then that coccyx down here, think of that like six o'clock. So the pelvic floor muscles run between the pubic bone and the tailbone or the coccyx. And your DIP corresponds to the first layer of the pelvic floor. Your PIP corresponds to the second layer and your MCP corresponds to the third layer. All right, place your finger of your left hand on your right thenar eminence. Kathy's showing on, <laughs> on the screen. That is normal tone of the pelvic floor muscles. Now bring your right index finger to your right thumb. The tone of the muscle at your thenar eminence changes. It gets more dense. Bring each finger index through pinky to your thumb and notice the increasing tension you feel at your thenar eminence. This sensation is similar to what hypertonic pelvic floor muscles feel like. Great. You've just assessed the tone of your patient's pelvic floor and you're normalizing the pelvic floor muscles so that they're like any other muscle group in the body. Now let's assess pelvic floor motor control. You can start doing this during your external visual inspection. Ask your patient to contract the pelvic floor muscles. We assess the clitoris. Does it nod? Does it lift? Does the anus wink? Check out the perineal body. Does it lift and elevate? And then internally with your second digit inserted, you'll be able to feel a squeeze of the finger as well as a lift like the patient is vacuuming your finger up and in. This contraction should feel symmetrical the whole way around and there should be equal pressure around your entire finger. If a patient has prolapse or has significant pelvic floor muscle weakness, two fingers may be needed in, or in order for a patient to feel the biofeedback of your finger. And for your for you to feel a good pelvic floor muscle contraction. This can be used in, especially for postpartum women that just need a little bit more biofeedback. Hard to tell with the video, but with one finger and then with two. So incorporate both pelvic floor muscle assessment and pelvic floor motor control into your bimanual exam so that you can create the right patient education plan for your patient. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues and comment below to let us know your biggest challenges with your bimanual exam. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide, four tips for managing your challenging pelvic exam. You'll also get access to our free weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to announce we're developing an online pelvic health course for nurse practitioners. Our course is going to break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize pelvic health. We'll see you soon.